You don't have to worry about it. Like, and don't lose your shirt like Antonio Brown did. The Locked On Astros podcast is here, and we got some news. The uh, James Click has some new assistant GMs, and we're going to talk about that. And we'll talk about more on the this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can they find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and at um, and on Instagram and at Stros four one one on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right, I was positive that we were going to talk about one thing tonight. Then all of a sudden, there was a bomb dropped, and there's a lot of Astros news uh, that dropped. And I know that we talked about this the other day. Jeremy Booth kind of uh, broke a lot of this news ahead of time. But it was made official. But before we talk about all this, I do want to, if you have not subscribed to us on YouTube, keep on subscribing to us and make sure you keep on listening to us, our podcast every day. Make us your first listen every day. And if you're, if you don't watch us on YouTube, make sure you listen to us on your way to work, on your way home work, on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, make sure you listen to Locked on Astros podcast. So the Astros made a couple additions to the front office, including the big, Time uh, news, I guess, would be that Andrew Ball and Scott Powers are going to join the uh, James Click as assistant GMs, joining uh, Pete Putula uh, as another assistant GM. So I know that for the past um, two seasons, James Click has been, um, Petula has been his number one guy, his right hand man. So now he has two other guys. So uh, tell us what you, we know about uh, Andrew Ball and Scott Powers. So Andrew Ball spent the last five seasons as director of baseball operations for the Angels. Um, and this was the hiring that um, Jeremy Booth had mentioned that there was someone from the Angels, but I guess he, he wasn't named yet. He basically assisted with roster management, player contracts, player procurement. In other words, finding players out there, getting them ready, salary arbitration and amateur scouting. Um, his focus in Houston will be um, the major league roster um, rules compliance. I mean, obviously there's going to be some new rules come in, um, contract negotiations and roster um, composition. So, um, and then you have powers. He's the guy that came from the Dodgers. You know, this, this may be another diamond in the rough. Now, I mean, obviously a front office guy isn't going to have the same impact as someone on the field, but you know, the whole famous, you know, Jordan Alvarez, for Josh Fields kind of trade. And whenever you get a valuable asset from another club like the Dodgers, I think it's a big deal for the past three seasons. He's assisted in their player evaluation, player development and in-game strategy. Um, and so his primary role here in Houston will be research development, performance science and other departments. So definitely some really smart hires for the Houston Astros. Um, like we've chronicled on this before and, and, and really bragged about Jim Crane allows his people to put the right people in. He's not a micromanager. He's trusting James Click. And I'm sure he's in on knowing who these guys are before they land. You know, and there was another big hire that that we that we hit on earlier that was actually really good. And we can talk more about her, but um, um, you know, Sarah Goodrum from the Brewers um in the in the hitting department. Yeah. Um, one more thing about Ball is that uh, James Click and him worked together in Tampa Bay where Ball was the assistant director of pro scouting. So this is their second stint together. And this is something that uh, they so he's going to be bringing some uh, some of the Tampa Bay kind of thinking, thinking, especially in terms of scouting and that type of thing. So uh, we'll see what happens. And we're we're getting some information, not information, but some maybe different ways of thinking from maybe the angels organization, more from the Tampa Bay Rays, maybe some from the Dodgers. So we're getting a different way of thinking from, uh, from different organizations. And I think that's kind of what's going on here. And 
So we'll see what happens. But uh, Goodrum um, will oversee all the organizational uh, player development staff and spearhead the formation and execution of coaching philosophy as, as well, a formation and execution of player development goal processes. So uh, she is, um, this is something that is, um, this is something that they've talked about, but this is official, official now. So Sarah Goodrum is, I mean, this is something that's come out a long, long time ago. For some reason, they haven't made it official, but they they dropped it all at once. And uh, so that's, it's pretty cool that she's on board. The Astros announced the other two assistant GMs and then they announced the other coaches. Uh, so, um, so she is the now one of the highest ranking female executives in baseball. Of course, you have the the Marlins Marlins GM. Yes, I um, when I can't remember what her name was, but Ang A N G, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, that's right. So um, she is to be the first uh, female director of player development in Major League history, and she spent the last year, like you said, as the minor league coordinate hitting uh, coordinator for the brewers so you know and uh, this is and this is a hire too eric that if if she is able to develop and move i guess up the coaching ladder as they say especially with the major league ball club this is someone who down the road could whether she's this person or or she paves the way where you could see the possibility in the future of a female bench manager, bench coach, or a female team manager. You know, I know the NBA's gotten really close to having females that are close to the head coaching position, like in San Antonio and some other sports. And so this this is really a groundbreaking move um, for the Houston Astros to make this hire. And good for Sarah Goodrum. I've I've read nothing but great things about her, about her understanding of the game. And obviously for a woman who played fast pitch softball to be able to understand, make the transition to major league hitting and, and help hitters go from minor league to major league, I think shows what talent she brings to the table um, where it's, you know, it's like, well, this is, this is a male dominated industry, obviously, but when a female is able to come in with that same validity, I think it really solidifies her knowledge and understanding of the game and the Astros understanding that this is someone they can really trust. Yeah, the Rockets just beat the Wizards, apparently, last second shot. So um, with the buzzer beater. Yeah, there you so. go. They broke their losing streak. Good job, guys. Yeah, so um, I know that they had to deal with some suspensions for walking off the court or something like that. Yeah, it so. was like one game suspension. Christian Wood was back in the mix, and he was looking like an all-star. And, you know, I mean – this whole young team, Eric, they're going to build around Shingoon. Um, he is that he is the future Shingoon and Green. Um, he's he's the next Akima Lajuan for the Rockets. Um, you know, so yeah, the Rockets got a lot more good road ahead of them than the Houston Texans do. Houston Texans, the who? Just, yeah, they're just <laughs> lost. I mean, I get the this, Texans get are trying to uh, coax the people to buy season tickets or renew their season tickets. Well, hey, oh yeah, here, here well, are all these options. <laughs> They're also, they're also, I heard today there's a possibility of trading for Baker Mayfield um, to Cleveland, like sending, sending Watson to Cleveland for Baker Mayfield and some draft picks. I don't know. I'm just like, dude, you know, one thing Cody Davis has at Locked on Texans is he definitely has enough to talk about for right. four and 11 team. He's got plenty to talk about over there. And if you haven't checked out Cody Davis at Locked on Texans, check him out. He's, he's good, dude. He's, he's got a great show. Yeah, it's for sure. And uh, speaking of which, uh, if you want something that's good, try Built Bar. So, Brett, tell us a little bit about Built Bar. So, Built Bar is the best tasting bar in the business, and I've been telling you this. And, and you, you may think, well, gosh, I've heard this spiel before, but sometimes you need to be reminded because I know not everybody has gone out and gotten a box. Most of y'all have, but this is what you need to do. Your New Year's resolutions are intact, and I know they've hit full speed. I know you hit the ground running, and you have kept your New Year's resolution into the six day of January and to help you with that have a healthy option of a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar it's wrapped in a hundred percent chocolate it's none of this fake chocolate it's the real deal Holyfield it they most bars average 130 calories four grams of sugar four grams of net carbs um, and 17 grams of protein I actually had one today as my snack of the morning it was phenomenal absolutely loved it 
the idea that we have for you in the new year is why make these huge, crazy goals? Like, I'm going to go to the gym for 12 months. Just make your goal like, I'm going to go to the gym three of the five days this week. But what I'm also going to do five of those five days is I'm once I get my built bar box, I'm going to I'm going to eat a built bar. That's easy. I'm asking you to eat a candy bar as part of your resolution. Anybody can do that. So go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15, built bar, the best bar in the biz. All righty. So uh, let's go and talk about the coaching staff and some yeah. other news uh, from that. So uh, Jason Kanzler is the only new coach uh, that will join the staff. And from what I understand is he will kind of take the role of maybe the bullpen kind of coach out there, somebody like that. So, um, but he was the, um, I think he, uh, he was in the Astros minor league system. He was, uh, the minor league hitting coordinator in 2021. And he was with the Fayetteville woodpeckers. And, um, then he was also part of the alternative, um, spring training site or training site in 2020 during the COVID season. So, uh, he's actually going to be, um, joining the Astros organization at some, in some uh, way. And I think that uh, Chandler Rome uh, kind of, or Jake Kaplan, one of them um, kind of suggested that he will probably be the bullpen coach, uh, just somebody out there just to kind of um, run, uh, be out in bullpen, but everybody else is back. You have Alex Centrone as a hitting coach. Michael Collins will um, be a, a major league coach. Then you have uh, Joe Espada. Thank you, everything. Uh, he's back. Um, then you have uh, Dan uh, Fiora. Uh, he came. Uh, he, I think he, he came at the end of last season. He's quality quality assurance coach. Then you have Omar Lopez, who'll be moving back to first base. Uh, then you have Josh Miller, pitching coach. Then you have Billy Murphy, pitching coach. So my question is, Brett. Who, who goes out to the mound? Do they both go out to the mound or do they do paper, rock, scissors? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think, I think I typically hear Josh. I think I typically hear Josh Miller's name more than I hear Murphy, but I don't, I have no idea who's going to garner that position. It all depends on, on who's going to be in the dugout, who's going to be out there in the bullpen. Um, I, I don't know who the lead guy is, but the, the one thing I do like about this is Gary Pettis is on here and, yeah, you know, he, he came back last year, but he never got back on the field. And for him to make it back at his age with dealing with, you know, off the field stuff, you know, um, things that basically kept him from performing his job. And I mean, he's a fan favorite. I mean, this is a guy that everybody knows and loves. And, and when you're a third base coach and you've made your name and fame coaching third base with the windmill and everything, that's going to be a welcome addition. I know all the players loved him. I remember in the playoffs back in 2020 when um, when he was um, sitting up in those box seats in left field in, um, in a Petco Park, like George Springer waving to him. And I remember him being there during the game. That was that was a really cool moment. So the Astros, you know, and they have um, Troy Snitaker, who is the son of the Atlanta Braves head coach. Um, Boo. you know, coach Seneca, I'm just saying that's his, that's his dad. And so we've, we've got a great hitting coach. We've got, we've got a great coaching staff. And that is one thing that the Astros have done well, but that's this one thing that of all the criticism that Jim Crane has taken for whatever reason, I don't see how you can be critical of just about anything he's done because he hires great coaches. He puts them in the right position. And like you said, we're able to hang on to Espada. And I think that's key because I really don't see Baker being here past next year. Now, I've been wrong before, but I think especially if they can go out and win the 2022 World Series, I think he rides off into the sunset. I think that it ensures him at a Hall of Fame. And then you put Espada in as manager as I think he would have earned it. Okay, picture this. Justin Verlander's having a bad start. And um, then Miller comes out to the mound. He's like, Miller, I don't want to hear any of your crap. Send out the other guy. Can you totally see Verlander doing that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They would never, no, he's never going to do that. No. Of I mean, all the pitchers on the team, I could see Verlander being like that. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Um, that would be that would be definitely an awkward moment for sure. For sure. <laughs> well, yeah. So I mean, it's good to kind of see the the kind of the coaching staff kind of shaping up a little bit. So, uh, in other news, uh, Fan Fest, were you planning on going? Um, I was gonna go to the I was gonna go to the alternate Fan Fest um, meetup that 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 Astros girls that that Astro girl was going to do it at, um, at a Kobo's Q. She was like, we can just invite all the players over to Kobo's Q and they could, they could meet us there. And then they, and then they delayed it. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't sent her a message. I was going to send her a message and tell her, Hey, um, by the way, the fan fest has been, um, has been postponed. Are you still going to, are we still doing the meetup? And so, yeah, I assume that was going to happen. I was shocked that they announced it. I was like, wait, what are you doing announcing it? Like former players, bull crap. Like you're not going to, you're not going to do that. Like that's, that's lame dash. O to, to quote Andy from the office, you know, Alec Breckman is going to be there. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah. He hey, did like man, idea of coming up with the fake players names or stuff. So yeah, but, no, I mean, look, man, here's the thing. The players probably don't want to don't want to mess with stuff like this right now. I mean, they right, are right they're enjoying their family. They're probably frustrated, but then again, they may they may love getting together with some fans. So hey, I I say we just show up and protest. Just show up in big strong numbers, ten thousand people strong. Where's the fan fest? Fans start chanting fan fest. Like have Alex Bregman ride in on like a on like a yellow and maroon Mustang or something, and I don't know just. I mean, forget it. Just like break the doors down. Let's let's like let's like break into Minute Maid Park, you know, and and have a fan fest riot. How's that? All right. So uh, the Astro said, out of abundance of caution and our desire to deliver the best experience to our fans, the Houston Astros have postponed the 2022 Caravan and Fan Fest presented by HEB. Well, but cracks it- me up. Uh, out of an abundance of caution. <laughs> Well, it has to probably do with the whole um, the whole situation going around with um, the Omicron as well. Oh, okay, it's okay. Not I just, totally wasn't making that can. Okay, I wasn't ma- okay. Well, then, then I don't go political that. here, but yeah, no, no, that's dude, that's not yeah. that's not political. No, that that's <laughs> yeah. that's what we're in, bro. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever but, variants uh, out there, you know, yeah, so. Uh, but uh, they did say that they're hoping to have this done before the regular season starts. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's gonna be as long as <laughs> as long as as long as spring training doesn't, you know, and you know, okay. Here's the thing: if if anybody from the Astros is is listening, d- don't do a virtual thing. Don't do a virtual fan fest. That is that is so dumb. Like, like, come on, like you either are going to have the fans meet the players because look, I mean, look at their, or Fitterman Sports is doing a card show with all these live signings, former Astros, TriStar Sports is doing a card show with current and former Astros. I mean, people are getting together and meeting. So don't, don't throw the whole, like out of, out of abundance of caution, just say it. it we're locked out. And we're not going to have it because we don't want to have it with our with our current players. And so, just call it what it is. We're not don't don't treat us like we're morons. We're in, we're an intelligent fan base, and we love our players. I mean, dude, I wouldn't mind a fan fest with a bunch of former players. I still love the former players. There, there are a lot right. of former players that I haven't yet met in person. I, I think pay that for would autographs be... with the former players, and I got to meet like um, a whole bunch of people, including yeah. J.R. Richard, uh, Shane Reynolds, uh, yeah, Luke Scott. I mean, yeah, yeah. So I mean, but you know, I didn't think it was going to happen, anyways. Um, another thing. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, everything on um, the Skeeter's website is seventy five percent off. I think that name change is coming into play and going to formulate quite nicely. The little was it the H Town Wheelhouses? And no, it was not the H Town Wheelhouses. But I basically was the first one to break the fact that the Sugar Land Skeeters are going to um, are are going to be changing their name. Okay. So what was yeah. the name again? Do you remember? No, no. It's it it's going to be something space related. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be something space related, but so you um, bet on the fact that it's yeah, not the H oh, Town Wheelhouses. 
No, they, dude, I don't want them to take <laughs> my name. I already got a radio show that took my name from me. I mean, Alrighty, Bet Online would already, like. Well, hey, hey, man. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue to march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus. At your for on your first deposit, just use the promo code locked on to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. And make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Astros podcast on YouTube and and make sure you listen to every uh, watch every video on YouTube. Go and like us and go and listen to us on the way to work, on the way home from work, on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, Just listen to Locked on Astros podcast. So um, I know that I I was listening to a local radio station and they were bashing um, the whole firing of Ken Rosenthal. Uh, well, not necessarily, I guess it was firing, but just not renewing his contract or whatever yeah. because of bad mouthing of, uh, Rob Manfred. And it just, it just crazy how, I mean, just thinking about it even more, it's just like the whole part of being a sports journalist is to have your opinion. Like people listen to our podcast for our opinions, whether it's right, right. or wrong, they listen to our, our podcast for our opinions. We're, we're not always right. We're not always wrong, but we're kind of somewhere in the middle. So it's just like with Ken Rosenthal, I mean, it's just like for somebody who has his reputation and everything to be silenced like that by uh, MLB Network, it just it still bothers me that 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 can happen. But I mean, I know he still has his other avenues where he can get his oh, yeah. resources he's, out. So I mean he's still employed by Fox Sports. He's still employed by by the Athletic. He has one of the top podcasts um with his with his podcast with the Athletic constantly in the top ten. Sugarland satellites. Mm, I don't, it's passable. Um but anyways with Ken Rosenthal, you know, look, at the end of the day if you're quote unquote working for like if we were working for MLB, um, we would probably have to watch what we said a little bit more about the commissioner of the league that we were hired by. And I mean, that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, if you work for that company, you you are employed by them and you're responsible for your words. And I don't I don't know that as a true journalist, you can be a true journalist. Um, I don't I don't know that being hypercritical of someone. I mean, even even we have to kind of we have to kind of watch. We can't like make anything personal with, you know, Rob Manfred, even though we don't we don't like half the stuff he does. And and we think baseball would be better off with a different commissioner. Um, Yeah, it's it's just kind of strange because he's not a guy that is a lightning rod, right? He's not one of these polarizing figures. Um, you know, when you have more of your personality guys like your Skip Bayless or like your Stephen A. Smith, you know, those guys that that really that really kind of try to stir the pot or they'll they'll say things really quickly without really thinking. Those are the guys you think that would typically get like an axe or something. But at the end of the day, um I thought Ken Rosenthal handled it with great professionalism. I invited him to come on the show to talk about it, but he didn't respond um, because, you know, he's, he's, he's big time. Um, And so it is to me, it's just one of those things, Eric, that you can nitpick and I can find 10 things about major league baseball and things they've done that really put a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, this is my favorite sport as a kid, as an adult, um, you, it's your favorite sport. Most of the people I, I run with in my circle, they're big baseball fans. And baseball has an image problem. Baseball has a PR problem. And the only people that can fix that are the people that are in charge. And I don't think the way to fix that is to let people go that have been critical. Now, had Ken Rosenthal come out and said something about well, you know, back 20 years ago, he said this, or it was something controversial, like I would get that. But I still couldn't find anything that that he wrote or said that I thought was overtly just just over the top and excusable. So 
I just think well, with, I mean, with the baseballs, the sticky stuff, um, the just just all the different things that have happened this last year, Eric. It's just another ding, I think, in the armor. I, I just think that maybe when he was in studio, he just was too much of a diva. Maybe he just wanted all green Skittles and uh, they just got tired of dealing with that. So he wanted, he wanted, he wanted, he wanted the Charlie Kerfell, Charlie Kerfell. Okay. Charlie Kerfell, number 37 pitcher for the Astros in the eighties was with them when they, when they, when they clinched um, the division with the Mike Scott, no hitter that guy had in his contract two uh, when he signed like a two or three year deal, every year of his contract, he got a year supply of green jello. That was in his contract. I mean, this guy, Charlie Kerfield, was something else. And we will, we need, we need to bring on some former guys, some older guys to talk about the old days. I need to reach out to Jeff Calhoun and some other guys from those old Astros teams and reminisce a little bit like we did last time. I had a lot of fun on that last show talking about the Astrodome. That yeah. that really that really did my baseball soul some good. I want to clarify something I said earlier. Um, it looks like uh, probably Miller will be in the dugout with um, okay. with uh, Baker, and then you'll have Murphy kind of like he was last year, probably in the uh, in the uh, bullpen with the relievers, something like that. That's what Jake Kaplan was kind of saying. Oh, and I need to correct something. Remember last time we talked about AstroTurf? Now, let me let me give this disclaimer. I was told my entire life that NASA invented AstroTurf. I didn't know that wasn't the case. It was Monsanto. Monsanto's a chemical plant. I don't think they're Monsanto anymore, but they're they have a, a chemical plant in between um, Angleton and Alvin. But Monsanto created the turf and it was called AstroTurf after the Houston Astros. But that's it was a space name, but see, I was always told growing up that it was NASA that, that, that like created the NASA scientist. So, um, the person that corrected me on, on Twitter, I said, Oh yeah, well, I, I guess I'd been fed wrong information. And when you're little and you're told something like that, you don't think to like go fact check it. Right. You just kind of yeah. believe it. And I think that person probably still believes that too, if they're still alive. Hey, um, Brad, go check on your uh, pillow. There's some money from two fairy too. What? <laughs> What? So hold on. No, that is no, that is not the same thing. That is not the same thing. The fact that I didn't know pickles and cucumbers were the same thing until I was like 26. Don't put that on me. Don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. But Hey, that's a true story, Eric. I will. I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, Hey, you know, call it what it is. I literally at the age of 26, I was, I was, I was living with a pastor's family when I was a youth pastor and he was pickling cucumbers and I said, oh, that's cool. I didn't know you could pickle cucumbers. He goes, well, once you pickle them, they're pickles. And I said, wait, cucumbers and pickles are the same thing? <laughs> and he goes, boy, you didn't know that? I said, no, sir, I didn't know that. And so, oh, my gosh, yeah, I was 26 when I realized pickles and cucumbers were that. Nobody shared that with me. We didn't have that conversation in my house. So we weren't, we weren't, um, you know, we weren't, we weren't savvy on all the pickling of cucumbers. But anyways, I did, I just thought that was funny. Um, just, you know, th th thinking back on that, that's what that reminded me of instantly when you said tooth fairy. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot more we can talk about. I mean, I was going to talk about the nine best players all time. Um, we keep on meaning to talk about that, but um, it's almost uh, 30 minutes already. So there's just, we had a lot to talk about today. This was a great um, uh, podcast already. So it's good that we finally know who the coaches are. We finally have two more people in the front office. Now, all we need to do is like Dorothy says, we need to go and get this lockout taken care of. But you know the sucky thing is, they haven't even started. They haven't even they haven't even met. talked. So this is this is what this is going to lead to: more talk about food. Um, Eric, I may have to introduce um, and this day in F one, this day in Formula One history because I have become an instant Formula One fan. I'm a big Max Verstappen fan. I'm a I, I mean just dude. These these guys are freaking athletes in October. You and I aren't going to an Astros game. We're going to the Austin Grand Prix, baby. I am going to go see some Formula One racing up close. This is a crazy sport, dude. I just ordered, don't don't tell my wife, I just ordered some Formula One racing cards in the mail. 
from Amazon. So um, do not tweet, do not text her. No, do, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I want to be like, what's this? Oh, I don't know. Um, some cards that are racing cards. <laughs> so, hey, dude, it's 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 like it's like that right now. This is what Major League Baseball is turning me into. Like, so I, I've, I've got to find other vices. And man, I'm watching the F1 series on Netflix. I highly, highly recommend it. I'm on season two. Go watch it, folks. You won't be sorry. OK, so Rob Manfred, here's some Skittles um, <laughs> to go and get you to the discussion table. And uh, Tony Clark, here's the airhead. Uh, to get you to a table. So are you uh, calling Tony Clark an airhead? No, just, I'm just trying to bribe them to get them oh. to the, the table. It's so like, uh, is this enough to get y'all to the table? Uh, no, uh, all you have to do is talk and you'll get the Skittles and yeah, all you have to. Yeah. I mean, I mean, for real, I'll even throw in a, I'll even throw in the Skeeter's foam finger. Cause that's, that's gonna be a collector's item. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully they get this going. Cause uh, before we know it, it's going to be February 1st and then spring training will be coming around. And then, uh, these guys aren't going to have enough time to get re <laughs> ready for a regular season. And yes, probably Rob Manfred and the whole Players Association needs a built bar because See, they need Yeah. To I mean, Locked on Astros Nation knows what's up. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, throw a built bar in there. They'll open the letter. They'll meet. I mean, all will be right with the world. I don't fan think they'll ever happen. open the letter. F hey, Fan Fest will happen. You know, I mean, come on. All righty, that's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. Make sure you keep on subscribing. And you know what? If you make us your first listen, make sure you make it the Lockdown Bets your second listen. Listen, And uh, they will have all – I'm sure they had the the whoever would win the, this Rockets game and who's going to win the Texans game. Are they actually going to win more than four games this year? Well, they only got one more game left. Well, listen to Locked on Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling, and they have all the news you need. And and um, just listen to uh, and however you listen to our podcast, you can listen to their podcast as well. Lock, uh, listen Locked on Bets, and we'll be uh, back with another podcast, Ghost Rose, and let's go and end this lockout. Uh, and um, I've got some bribery for you, Rob Manfred and Tony Clark, if you want to get to the table and we'll talk to you later.